coming up on the House of Grace Experience today. He shows us here that being seduced is actually being shifted away from the truth. Being shifted away from that which it is that God teaches. It becomes more and more easy to be shifted from truth if you don't constantly reinforce truth in your heart. House of Grace, living in His favor. Timothy, in chapter 2, reading from verse 1, and it says, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come in the last days, it says to us. And then it goes on to let us to understand, you know, how perilous days will be and um, the meaning of perilous times. And they say, so men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. All right. And so he shows to us certain other things that, that are characteristic of the last days, and it says that men shall be lovers of their own selves, and men shall be... Um, Men shall be lovers of pleasure and more than lovers of God. The implication of that is that we are supposed to be, or men are supposed to be lovers of God rather than lovers of something else. Are you following me? Chapter 2 of First John, from verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning, if that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall, you also shall continue in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he had promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. So, what does it mean to be seduced? He shows us here that being seduced is actually being shifted away from the truth. Being shifted away from that which it is that God teaches. You know, now it can be very subtle. It can be in a slow manner. It could be drastic, but the important thing is that, you know, somebody is shifted away, you know, from the truth. Now, as you go on in life, as you operate in life, walk in life constantly, you get to find out that it becomes more and more easy to be shifted from truth if you don't constantly reinforce truth in your heart. Are you following me? If we don't know what it is to constantly reinforce truth, we'll find that we are shifted. And so he warns clearly in First Timothy in chapter 4, in the last days, he warns that there will be rampaging devils whose operations okay, will constantly be to the intent that people will be shifted from truth. To be shifted from truth. And the more they are shifted from truth, the more easily they can backslide. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Come read it out, everybody read. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing the spirits and doctrines of devils. Why shall they depart from the faith? It says, because they'll, be, they'll begin to give heed to seducing the spirits. To instructions, doctrines, thoughts, ideas that, you know, are not the truth. These operations are so subtle. And if you want to get out of this situation, you must know what it is 
to put God as number one in the pursuit of your life. Let me tell you something about spiritual, spiritual blessings and why God gives us. Why he's blessed us with spiritual blessings, not material blessings. And he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. The reason is because spiritual blessings, <laughs> first of all, God is a spirit. And you don't expect if God will bless you, he'll bless you with the things that are spiritual. First of all. Now secondly, and this is the clinch, and this is why I'm excited about that which God will do. And the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and adds no sorrows to it. So spiritual blessings, they are an empowerment from God by which you can increase in life and never experience sorrow. And so when he will bless, he blesses with spiritual blessings. It's important that we come to recognize the spiritual blessings, you know, and spiritual things. And, and you see, the, the other thing also is this. Spiritual blessings or spiritual things are far more superior than material, physical, or financial things. Far more superior. For us as individuals, as natural individuals, we view satisfaction or would rather have satisfaction from our expectations being met. Why is it that people are dissatisfied? Dissatisfaction is actually a result of unfulfilled expectations. Is that not true? Hap unhappiness is a result of unfulfilled expectations. Is that not true? But it is not expectations that are met... That should produce or give satisfaction. Philippians in chapter 4. Verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have gotten everything that I need. And I am thus content. All my expectations have been met. Huh? Can we read verse 11 together? Go. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned. In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Contentment is learned. Contentment is not something that happens to you because expectations are met. You have to learn it. Now, if you don't learn it, you'll not know what it is to rise into the high places of life in God. I'm telling you. They are high places of living in God. Now, here is how contentment operates. Look at what it tells us in the next verse, in verse 12. And it says, can we read verse 12 together? Go. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. What is he saying here? He's saying, I am instructed to sacrifice. To be instructed means what you want is not what it is you are doing. He's letting us to understand here that, you know, if you do not, if you have not learned what it is to sacrifice, in other words, to keep what you want aside, you will not know contentment. He said, my meat is to do the will of my father and to finish his course. The doctrines of devils, my brothers and sisters, wants to ensure that you never get satisfied in life. By directing you to your personal love. He says to us that in the last days, Men shall be lovers of themselves, not lovers of God. It is loving God that fulfills your desire, brother. What's the only material thing you should have? You see, because it's when you love God you can be instructed. It is when you love God that you can count everything that is natural in life as dung. 
so that you can win Christ. Are you following me? What are the only two things you should have that, you know, what are the only two things? First Timothy in chapter 6, taking it from verse 7. I read verse 7, then we'll read verse 8 together. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Verse 8, everybody. And having food and raiment. What should we have? What are the only two things we should have? Yeah, somebody reads that, for instance, the person thinks that, well, food and raiment, that's, that's exactly the stuff, you understand? You know, what I just need, if I, I can have, if I can, you know, if I, if, if I have a plate of isiewu, you know, and see, you know, no, no, notice, it didn't say having foods. Look at it. In chapter 6, 1 Timothy and verse 6, it says, can we, I'd like us to read this one together and read it strong. But godliness with contentment is godliness with contentment you want to gain greatly godliness with contentment is great gain you think this is your this one you are jumping everywhere looking for a job that they will pay you in six figures, in seven figures, all of that's nice. But you know what? You're paid, no matter what you're paid, I guarantee you, if you've not learned contentment, it will not be enough. I remember a sister who didn't have a job, I've told you about her before. She didn't, she, after, after graduating from school, she didn't have a job for like three years, and the first job she got, she was earning 500,000 naira for starters. Now, by the way, this was way back in 19. 99 and then i remember i'll never forget the day and then she said to me i passed on this job i'm looking for another job i said are you well are you are you okay say ah pastor there are people that are earning one m about six months earlier you didn't have a job it's been less than a year that you were earning over five hundred thousand naira and now you are no longer contented. You want something more. Why? Because contentment is not something that comes from getting the things you want. It is something that comes from having learned. A lot of us Christians disdain spiritual things. We must, we must begin to become more and more excited generate in ourselves develop in ourselves you know spirituality and that's what i'm talking about this evening how to develop spirituality we must develop spirituality a taste for spiritual things because nothing on this side of time will be able to give you satisfaction it's by Having these spiritual things. So Paul, we find Paul and Paul speaking in, in chapter 3 of First Corinthians in the first verse. And it says, in, in the, when I came to you, he said, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto canal. He said, I couldn't speak unto you. You know what? The people who don't know spiritual things or have a heart for spiritual things, they'll never learn contentment, you see, because until it is those spiritual things that instruct you. He said, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. I couldn't speak unto you as unto spiritual. You know. So you're trying to teach the person, you know, but then the person says, what are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell me that I should not walk? Are you trying to tell me I should not have food? They're constantly fighting it. I couldn't speak unto you as unto spiritual. And because you can't communicate with them as spiritual, you find out that they never rise. They never rise and have satisfaction in life. It's vital that we develop spirituality how do you develop spirituality? Because that's when you're able to make use of the spiritual blessings. Number one, by the word of God. Let's take the word of God. 
The Bible makes us to understand that in the last days, people will not be able to endure sound doctrine. And so let us sit down and take sound doctrine. Let's endure it. To endure means to, um, it means to be able to stay under it. It means, it, means that, it means that it is something that your natural self will fight against. And so you endure it. It is, it is what God said. It means that there is going to be a lot of pressure to move you out of it. But say, but this is what God said. But this is what God said. Pressure to act in the other way is high and will be high. But we must endure sound doctrine. We must endure it. There's going to be a lot of pressure to compromise, to sleep with the, with somebody you're not married to so that you'll be able to succeed, you know, and all such things. But don't ever forget this is what God says. Take the word of God. Store it in you. Live by it. Amen? That's how you, that's how you get to be spiritual. Jesus said the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's number one. Second thing that's important in developing spirituality is that learn to pray and trust God. In every situation of life, know what it is to take it to God. Know what it is to commit it unto Him. Rather than you worrying about things, learn what it is to pray. The Bible says that we should cast all our cares before Him because He cares for us. Stop using your actions to say, God, you don't care. Let's not do that. Are you following me, my brothers and sisters? You know. Learn to pray. Don't join the bandwagon of people that say such things as, we have prayed enough. You never pray enough. Because the master himself said, we shall pray without season. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Okay? And thirdly, third thing that's important. Let's learn to pray in the Spirit. Oh, take time constantly to pray in the Spirit. Develop the time. Develop the habit of spiritual prayer or praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. You know. Don't belittle it. Don't laugh against it. In church, see people praying, praying in tongues and all that. I'm looking at them and say, <laughs> which kind of tongues is this one? Brothers and sisters, we're not wasting our time. We are speaking mysteries unto God. God who understands the mind of spirit, he, he, he takes those things and utilizes them to walk on our behalf. Because the spirit makes intercessions for us, you know, according to the will of God. Don't belittle it and take it like little things. No, don't get tired in speaking in tongues. And then number four, to develop spirituality, lend the value of sacrifice. That's what we've been talking about all day. How not to live in your own way. How to constantly deny yourself so that the name of the Lord can be lifted up. When you do that, you find you're speaking to people in spite of your intimidation. You find that you are, you are inviting somebody to church and you tell the person, you know, I like to invite you to church today. And the person says, I don't go to church. And the person says, but, but, but you know, I, I go to church. I like you to, I like you to accompany me. I'm not telling you that you... You, you, you should begin to go to church. I, I, that's not what I said. I said, I want to invite you to church. It'll be the time of your life. Say, but I don't go to church. Say, but I go. And that's the reason why you're missing out on the Lord. That's the reason I'm telling you. You know, there's so much that, that can happen to you. I, I wish I could be able to tell you everything. But experiencing it is far more better. I can't tell you enough for you to experience Say, what is the special thing about your church? If I could have explained, don't you think I will? Come on, are you following me, brothers and sisters? This is how we are to go in life. Amen? Amen. Develop a taste for spirituality and grow spiritually. And see what will happen to you. See what will happen to you in life. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Master. 
Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. You have watched highlights of a message preached in the House of Grace service. To order the full message in audio CD or DVD format, which is approximately 60 minutes long, please call 0704-355-0545 or 0704-355-0546. Or you can log on to www.hoganline.org. I hope you enjoyed today's message and it answered the burning questions of your heart. Now, if you're not yet attached to any part of the body of Christ, you can worship with us at the House of Grace. We would very much like you to be part of our family. So log on to www.hoganline.org for locations near you.